the Digilent 82 scope that we're going to be using is a USB based scope. It operates from software that is running on your PC. So the first thing we're going to have to do is download that software. It's called Waveforms. We're going to go to the Digilent.com website, download it. We're going to install it. I'm going to give you a quick run through of the different functions that are available. And then in the next video, we're going to take a look at how do we interface the scope to the devices under test that you're going to want to look at. First thing you're going to do is open up a search bar and go to Digilent. This is the main website. Great website. You want to browse at your leisure. We're going to go to USB scopes and instruments. And here are the various options. It's the Analog Discovery 2 that we're going to be using. So we click on the icon for it. It comes to the landing page for this instrument. We scroll down a little bit. Here you can check out the specs and the getting started guide, but we're going to walk you through using the scope uh, through this video series. And here's Waveforms. This is the software that runs on your PC or, uh, or computer. Now it, it's worthwhile to take a quick look at some of the initial specs for the scope here. It's a two channel scope, one meg input. We'll see, very important, and we'll see this later on, differential input. Uh, it's about, it lists here, uh, 30 megahertz. We'll see later on when we do some measurements that it's about a 35 megahertz bandwidth, but that's it. Samples at 100 mega samples a second, 14-bit resolution. We'll see the importance of that later on. Also really important that we're going to use right away is it also has a two-channel arbitrary waveform generator. And it really is a function generator that allows us to generate a whole bunch of different waveforms. There's other features in it as well that we'll take advantage of down the line. The first step though is downloading waveforms. We click over here and now it asks for uh, what um, is the software that you want to use. We want the latest download. This is um, uh, just about a month old. Uh, and then uh, it runs on a variety of different operating systems. Uh, my, my particular computer happens to be a Windows machine. Uh, and so we click here for the installers for all the operating systems. And you have to fill out a little bit of information here. Uh, and then, but it's completely free. Uh, my operating system happens to be 64-bit. You fill this in, you submit it, and then you'll be able to download the waveforms software. And when you download it, the next step, of course, is installing it. And when you install waveforms, at this moment, I don't have my Analog Discovery 2 scope plugged in. And so I come up with this message, hey, no device found. I say, OK. And if I wanted to, in, in the first series of videos uh, about the Analog Discovery 2, we actually start with this way without the scope hardware. And we can use the sound card in our PC or our computer as the front end scope. Uh, and that's what's covered in the first set of videos. In order to use it without a scope and use the sound card, you do have to fill out a little form here. But once you do that, uh, you're able to run the software with the sound card. But we're not going to do that because we have the Analog Discovery 2 scope. So we plug in the USB connection. And I will warn you that you know, the connector that they use is not the greatest in the world, and sometimes the uh, connector comes out of the scope, and you'll get an error that, hey, I can't find the scope. So you want to double check those connections. And if you move the scope around, sometimes that connector gets a little loose. That's why I don't like USB uh, micro connectors all the time, because they're not terribly robust. Now that the Analog Discovery 2 scope is plugged in, we open up waveforms and it comes up in a different format. It knows I've got that scope plugged in. And look at all the different functions that are available for us. This is really important. This is where we're going to come back to a number of times to take advantage of all the different features this tiny little USB scope has. Right now, we're going to use the scope and we're going to use the wave gen waveform generator. If we click scope, the scope comes up and presto. Now, I have my background set for white 
uh, because when I take a snapshot or a screen capture, I don't want a lot of black if it prints out. And so I set up my background for white. And you can change some of those features. And I'll just point out a couple of quick ones for you. Wherever you see a little gear, that means, hey, here's a place where you can change settings. And they're strategically located all around the screen based on the kind of function that they're going to uh, control. Uh, to control the overall screen, we're going to go to the little gear settings over here. Uh, and then here's where we can control what the software looks like. Um, I use the light color background. If we go to dark color background, there's our dark background. And so if you prefer using the dark background, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to stick to the light background. Uh, and you can go in and you can try some of the other features. Under graphics, because I want the screen to show up a little bit more cleanly so that you can see it, I use a plot width of two pixels. Again, you can change this to one if you want small lines. You don't recommend going too much above two, but again, try it out. It's never a bad idea to go through the manual for the instrument before you start playing with it. For the user interface of the 82 using waveforms, I find it's pretty intuitive and you can, if you're familiar with a scope, you can pretty much deduce what the buttons mean. And one of the ways of reverse engineering is you try it and see based on what you expect to see happening. And we'll do that a number of times uh, throughout this video series. So we're all set up. The very next thing we're going to do is, you notice there's nothing there. I don't see any of the measurements. Even though there's nothing connected to my scope right now, it sure would be nice to see something. And here is the magic button. And this is the case with a lot of scopes. They come up without the trigger activated. And you can see right up here, here is where the trigger is. There's a big green button that says run. All we have to do is press that button and now we're triggering. And it takes a, about a second or so and you'll start seeing some waveforms. The scale is voltage in the vertical direction time in the horizontal direction. Now all we see is that one line and you know it's only one line. There's two channels. Here's how we turn them on and off. Let's turn off channel 2 for now. Only channel 1 is on but I still don't see anything because there's nothing coming in. And so if I increase the range, if I zoom in on the scale, I come to this button here. I'm going to go all the way down. Let's go to 2 millivolts of division. Wow. And now I'm starting to see noise. The scope is live. If you get to this point, then you've successfully installed and started waveforms and we're ready to go take a look at how do we connect the outside world to our scope.